Okay, so that was easy. Um, let's, I'm going to disable this or comment that out. Let's add another, actually I'm just going to copy this. And I want to call this label ingredients. And then list ingredients. Actually, let me rename this. This isn't just going to be a list of all ingredients. It's going to be a list of ingredients that belong to the recipe we've selected. So I'm going to say recipe ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to create another method. I'm just going to copy this because we'll reuse a lot of the same code. Um, ideally, you could find ways to refactor this and um, reuse some of these objects a little bit better, but this is going to be okay for us. So I'm going to say I want to select all from ingredient this time. And we're going to call this the ingredient table, fill the ingredient table, and the column names for ingredient were the same, but actually we need to change this up a little bit. So I should have left open the query window we did earlier that had the uh, SQL query with the join in it. We're just going to have to rewrite that. So this time I'm going to put my query in a string variable. I'm going to say select all from ingredient and actually we'll put this up here just so we can pass it here so I want to select all I actually want to select just the name from ingredient I'll add the alias And then I want to, I'm going to do this just to make it a little neater. I want to interjoin recipe ingredient B on A dot ID equals B dot ingredient ID. And then I want to say where B dot recipe ID equals recipe ID. And the at recipe ID, that's syntax for a parameter. And I'll show you how we're going to use that parameter. Basically, it means each time we run this query, we can pass whatever value we want here. So that looks good. So we passed in the query. And and we're actually going to need to change this. We need to we need to add a SQL command. Commands are another form of handling a select query and they support parameters. So I'm going to do command equals new command. I'm going to pass in the query and the connection. And now we can just pass in the command to the data adapter. And so now we need to define what this parameter is, what the value is. I'm going to say command.parameters.add with value. It wants the parameter name, which is recipe ID. That's actually lowercase. And then it wants the value. So the value is going to be list recipes.selected value. So basically, we are saying that whatever recipe is selected in the list box, get the value of that, get the ID, and pass it into this query, which is going to return the ingredients that are tied to that recipe. 
Okay, basically a programmatic way of doing the inner join select we did previously to show how ingredients were tied to recipes. Okay, also as a side note, you'll notice we only passed the command here and we didn't have to pass the connection because it's already specified in the command. So this looks good. Let's go ahead and run this. Actually, we need to rename this to populate ingredients. And then we'll just add a call to that also. So if we load our form, sorry, I did that incorrectly. We don't want to call that when the form loads. We want to call it when the selected index has changed. Because each time the selected value changes, this value is going to change and we want to rerun the query and repopulate it with the correct ingredients for the recipe we selected. So now let's run our application. Oh, and I missed uh, several steps here. So this should actually be the ingredients list box. Save that. There we go. So we can see all the risks recipe ingredients that are tied to the salad and of course our low-fat salad should not have the cheese listed okay so we're getting the results we expect so that's the basics of how to run select statements so let's add some functionality to insert a new recipe okay so I'm gonna move these down a little bit and I'm going to add a button and a text box. We're only gonna take in the name of the recipe and we'll just hard code the other values to keep it simple. So I'm gonna say button add recipe text add recipe and I'll name this text recipe name. Okay So again, I'm going to copy some of this, and we're actually not going to use a data adapter this time. So let's write out our query, and just the insert query, insert into recipe values. And remember, we don't need to specify the ID column. That's generated automatically for us. Instead, we need the uh, name. So we're going to say recipe name. That's going to be a parameter. And we'll hard code the prep time to 80 minutes and the instructions to blah, blah. Okay, and we passed our query into a SQL command. So SQL commands are not only used for uh, reading values, they're also used for inserts and updates, any kind of SQL command. Uh, we have one parameter, this time it's recipe name, and we want to get that value from the text recipe name dot text. Um, this time we don't need to do any of this. All we need to do is command dot execute non query. Executes a SQL statement against the connection and returns the number of rows affected. We don't need the return values, so we're just going to execute it. Okay, so if I were to run the form right now, let's go ahead and run the application and add a 
burger recipe. Oh, and we're not using a data adapter this time. The command, SQL command, does require the connection already be open. So instead, we just have to add a connection.open. So if I run my application now, I can click, or I can type burger and add the recipe, but it doesn't reflect because we haven't updated these. So if I restart the application, uh, it still doesn't show up. It should. Oh, okay, I know the issue. Um, if you go over here to your cookbook.mdf file in your Solution Explorer and check the properties, it says copy always. So this copies a f fresh uh, version of the database each time you run the application. So that would get rid of any of your changes. Let's not do that. Let's say only copy if newer. So now we can go in and add a burger. Still won't reflect real time, but we can restart the application and there it is with no recipe or no ingredients tied to it, of course. So let's add a way for that to update automatically, which is really simple. Just repopulate the recipes once we add them. So let's add a soup. Okay, so that worked. It popped up. Okay. So let's add some functionality real quick to uh, maybe update a recipe name. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, we don't need another text box. We just need a update recipe name button. Update name. Let's go into here. And we're going to reuse some of this functionality. This time we want to update update recipe set name equal to recipe name where ID equals recipe ID. Okay, so recipe name, this time we want to get the value, no, actually we'll keep that the same and we'll add another parameter of recipe ID and we will get that from the recipe selected value like we did above. Okay, so it's going to set the name to whatever's in the text box and it's going to do that for the recipe that we have selected. And then we have the uh, populate recipes method which should update the form for us. So I'm going to select burger and I want to rename that to burger deluxe. I'm going to hit update name and we have an exception. Unclose quotation mark before the character string. Let me stop this here. Set name equals. Okay. Looks like that was the problem. Not sure why that was there. Or this. I guess I left that from the insert statement. So let's try this again. We're going to update burger to burger deluxe. And then it updates for us. Okay. So let's do one more thing with this. We want to be able to add ingredients to a recipe. Okay, so I'm going to move this to the side for now. So actually I'll move this below here. We'll keep these the same. And 
Okay, so we need a full list of full list of the recipes we have or the ingredients we have. So I'm going to say label all ingredients. list all ingredients so we need some code to populate that we'll just do that on the form load event but we have to create a method first it's gonna look really similar to this populate all ingredients select all from ingredient We'll change these names. And we'll change this to the all ingredients list box. And then we'll just call this on form load since we're not going to be inserting or updating to it. So let's make sure that works. Lettuce, cheese, tomato. Okay, so now we need to add something to associate the ingredient we select to the recipe. So I'm going to copy this button. I'm going to say button add to recipe. can just change this to add to recipe. And I'm going to copy the insert we used here. This time we want to insert into our associative table. We want to insert into recipe ingredient. And remember the ID column is first. We're not going to need to insert into that. But we do need to give it the recipe ID and the ingredient ID. So recipe ID is going to be the current recipe we have selected in the list box. and the ingredient ID is the ingredient we have selected in the all ingredients list box. Okay, so it's going to insert an association between the recipe that's currently selected and the ingredient we've selected that we want to add to it and insert that. And once again this will take care of uh, refreshing the form for us. So now obviously there are a ton of exceptions we haven't handled at this point and um, that can be your homework to go back and sort of refine this because we don't want to add another association to lettuce um, for the salad or it's just going to duplicate it. So let's go to our low fat salad. Let's update the name to super fat salad because we're going to add some cheese. Okay, so you can see here currently the ingredients that belong to this recipe are only tomato and lettuce. So let's add cheese. So now if I go to super fat salad, now we have the cheese. It belongs to this recipe. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good start. Um, we learned how to select, update, insert, and how to kind of use some controls to read the data, write the data, etc. So I think I'm going to end this series here, and I just wanted to show you guys the sort of the basics of how the ADO.NET framework works and how you work with data in your applications. We're going to look at another series in the future that basically teaches you how to undo everything you just did, essentially, and simplify your data access through the use of an object relational mapper like any framework. So if you guys have any questions, just email me or leave them in the comments, and I'm sure they'll get answered. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.